Okay, uh, it'll be interesting to see if I can pull this off. I've never actually done this live like this before, but we'll see. Uh, this is um, this is what I'm calling the Dick Fan Circuit. Um, it's from a video by Rick Friedrich, Friedrich, and it is a a way to modify a four-coil brushless fan in order to turn it into a battery charging system that is alleged to be uh, over unity. So uh, with this particular thing, what you do is you just simply gut the fan, uh, remove all of its internal circuitry, and then break out the, the uh, individual four coils, uh, and then connect them together. All, all three of them are being used as drive coils and they're all to be connected in parallel. And then the fourth coil is used as a sense or trigger coil to uh, trigger a switching element, in this case a, a bipolar transistor, to uh, turn on the power through the coils and then turn it off again. And when it turns off, uh, the coil power uh, collapses, the magnetic field created by the coils collapses and creates a large high voltage inductive spike which is uh, channeled through this diode here to charge the charge battery. Okay. And uh, so there's a bipolar transistor and a neon to protect the um, collector emitter junction from a high voltage. This does create pretty high voltage. And a resistor so that you can control the uh, sensitivity. Uh, but I could not get any of my bipolar transistors to work in this arrangement. It just, the, the f pulse from the uh, fan coil was just too weak to actually um, trigger any of the uh, transistors that I have. Now I did not have one of these MJ, MJL2194 2194 transistors. They're, you might be able to find them on eBay. They're kind of expensive. Um, I consider them to be unobtainium because any ones that you get are probably going to be fake anyway. So, the, and this circuit is, is kind of a kludge. It's, uh, why use a power dissipating bipolar transistor when you could use a MOSFET that dissipates very little power and switches very cleanly. So let's just, let's get rid of this. Let's, let's get rid of that driver and let's make up a new driver. Okay. Uh, positive from the input battery coming in and we have our four or rather four, four motor coils, A, B, C, and D. The uh, four coils should be all in parallel. All in parallel. And continuing on from the top end of the parallel stack of coils, so that's not the right place there, we want to get our flyback pulse through a diode over to the positive pole of the charge up battery. Okay, so there's our scruffy fast diode there. And let's see. We want to connect the negative of the charge battery to the other end of the coils there. So the flyback pulse goes through the charge battery back to the source. Okay, now the run battery has its own negative rail over here, so we need 
a switching element, and we said we were going to use a MOSFET. Right? So, so we got drain source gate down to there. All right. Now we have to figure out some way to actually switch the MOSFET off of the signal coming from this coil, right? Well, let's take the coil, the sense coil, and let's bias it to half of the supply voltage by using two equal value resistors there, make a voltage divider going into one end of the sense coil. The other end of the sense coil, then, we want to put into the inverting input of an op-amp. Give the op-amp some power, and for the non-inverting input of the op-amp, we want to give the, something to compare to, so let's use another voltage divider made up of a couple of 220k resistors and a 10k pot. So then we have the that goes into the non-inverting input of the op-amp, and then the output of the op-amp goes into a gate driver chip, which is connected with a 10 ohm resistor to the gate of the MOSFET. And uh, that pretty much takes care of it. Right? So we got plus of the charge battery, minus of the charge battery, plus of the run battery, minus of the run battery, the four coils, the sense coil biased to half the supply voltage and then fed to the inverting input, a comparator voltage to the non-inverting input of the op-amp. Uh, that goes into the gate driver chip, a 10 ohm resistor to the gate of the MOSFET, and uh, that's, that's it. So now some component values, let's see, R, 1 through R4, 22K, the R5 pot, 10K, MOSFET, uh, IRF640 or similar, diodes, uh, I don't know, MUR1560 or similar, um, TL082 for the that, uh, TC4420 or IXDD614, uh, something like that. Yeah, I think that'll work. And that humming that you're hearing in the background is actually that. It is working. Thanks for watching.